Hello, it is February 27th, 2020, and I thought I'd just pop on here real quick to say hi. There's this budding little community I feel like in the comment section of my videos that I love. The people who regularly comment, um, several of you I have started friendships with that have been such a blessing to me in my life. and. Especially on these cold, dark gray days of Midwest winters in the United States, knowing that that there are people out there who care about me has been such a lifesaver. So I thank you so much for your calls, texts, and prayers. Just getting over a little funk of seasonal affective disorder. Um, and it's like, what is with the selective memory? loss or selective memory when when life gets like that like when you're just dragging that's when you have to up the self-care up the exercise up the vitamin d up just reaching out to people and saying hey i'm kind of struggling or hey i'm just saying hello but i don't have the energy to talk today like, when you have friends who you can say that to, that's a true friend. And and I have true friends in my life today, and I'm so thankful. The last video I posted, of course, was a little introduction to my mom. And we are going to get together hopefully this weekend and do a little video conversation. You know, I've been helped so much by others who have faded out of the organization or disassociated themselves from the Jehovah's Witness organization and took the time to to record their journey in audio visual, visual form. <clears throat> um, I guess what I wanted to put out there is do you have any questions for my mom that you would like her to answer? I know the format for a lot of um, XJW videos kind of follows along the lines of how did you come into the organization? What was it like being in the organization? What was it that woke you up and how is life now? So those basic questions, but other questions you would like my mom, she's 74. She's going to be 75, big number 75. We're going to get her a t-shirt that says I stayed alive till I'm 75 or something like that. <laughs> um, and yeah, she was baptized, well, 75 minus 61, whatever that number is. Anyway, she was in the org for 61 years. The last 10 of which she was in a Spanish congregation. Well, I'll let her tell you her story, but she was in. She was very zealous. And we now are sisters in Christ, even though we're mother-daughter, and... I'm very blessed for that reunion and relationship. So that'll be coming up soon. I guess the other thing I wanted to talk about, I don't even remember, is I'm going to Costco, pick up my groceries for the next two weeks. But uh, a, a fellow activist had written a Facebook post about like doing what you love every day and it's easy to get kind of like caught up or hung up on, oops, I don't have the right of way. I shouldn't be making videos while I'm driving. I'm sorry. Not getting caught up on the past. And it reminds me of that scripture where I, I think it was Jesus who said, he who is sowing a field doesn't look behind him, doesn't look behind the plow. Like you look forward and just striking that balance between, I mean, I'm never going to forget where I came from. And obviously I don't think it's healthy to focus on that past, but also I think there's importance in the quote that says a history unexamined is a history doomed to repeat itself. And how do we keep <clears throat> new cults from sprouting up? It's like a weed. How do we how do we halt that sort of infestation happening to future generations? By telling our stories and, and how it affected us so other people can 
learn from our wisdom as cult survivors. So that's why I still talk about it, not because I'm hung up on it or I can't get over it, but this is my outlet and how I hope I am paying it forward. And this morning, gratitude is such a huge part, I believe, of the, the healing and recovery journey, being grateful for what you've gained despite feeling the effects of what you've lost. And I was meditating on that this morning, like all the, the beautiful things I have gained since leaving that organization and rebuilding my life. There was something else I wanted to share. Should we listen to some classical music while I try to remember? It's called, it's called hit pause and edit. I ain't got time for that. <laughs> Um, I know what I wanted to share real quick. It's interesting. I know this is kind of like uh, a, a luxury problem to have. Meaning, I know so many people out there have to work way more than 40 hours a week just to make ends meet. I kind of have a seasonal job, so this weird thing happens in the winter where I have a lot of extra time and I haven't been the best at managing my time which I think also added to depressive and anxious feelings poor time management not getting things done and as Jehovah's Witnesses everything was scheduled out for us you know you had your field service you had your meetings you had your meeting prep blah 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 and when you don't have those time slots filled, it's easy to, well, at least for me, it's easy to just kind of go into sloth mode. And I think that, that uh, well, not I think. My mom would send me these text messages like, I'm bored, want to do something because it was like meeting time or whatever. And we have been filling our time lately every week with a... Uh, a diverse Bible study group of church ladies, like remember from SNL, who was it that did the, the church lady impersonation? What was that comic's name? I really liked it. David Spade? Anyway, we've been going to a United Methodist church and meeting in the library. It's about 15 older ladies and myself. And I, they're so adorable. I love them. I love their energy. I love listening to them. And then there's my mom and I, and we, we've introduced ourselves and like where we've come from. And they're all very intrigued and fascinated by it. So yesterday we went to it and they were asking us all these questions about Jehovah's Witnesses. And it was really, well, first of all, I said, we, I don't want to hijack the Bible study because they kept asking all these questions about Jehovah's Witnesses and what do they believe. And one lady was cute. She's like, yeah, I accepted the literature, and then they just kept coming back every month, and finally, uh, she said, you know, they just kept coming, and I didn't want to be rude, but I, I hid in my kitchen one day when I saw that they were walking up the sidewalk, and I hid, and I'm like, oh, we knew you were home. We call that home but hiding, and we all had a laugh, and she said, she said, do Jehovah's Witnesses check the obituaries? Because they came right after her husband had died and really kind of preyed upon that grief period. I said, yeah, Jehovah's Witnesses do check the obituaries and ooh, all the things I've had to repeat. I didn't do that um, myself personally, but there's plenty of things that I've had to repent of that I engaged in when I was a Jehovah's Witness. So we just had a really great conversation and uh, a few of them said, well, what should I do when they knock on the door? Because one of the things I said to them was, when they knock on your door, even though it's probably inconvenient and it was unexpected and it takes a lot of patience, be kind to them. Because it was the kindness of a Christian's door who I knocked on that really was one of the very first seeds of cognitive dissonance that got, that sprouted. 
because I was just so confused how this person who was not a Jehovah's Witness yet knew his Bible, loved Jesus, loved God, loved his neighbors, um, but yet wasn't a Jehovah's Witness. How could this person not see the truth and yet uh, be so Bible literate and loving? So uh, that, that was fun. And my other thought just flew up my head. I've been having like these weird memory lapses. I went to the chiropractor yesterday and she was talking about brain integration and, and exercises you can do. Cross crawls is one of those things. I know this is like a total aside, but it's interesting why babies crawl or at least should crawl before they start walking is because it's like that cross crawl movement integrates the left and right brain hemisphere. So I need to do some more of those because I feel like early onset Alzheimer's or something going on here. But yeah, filling your time with things that make you happy, even if you don't necessarily feel like associating with other people, especially if you're an introvert, but it's all good. I guess I just want to pop in and say hi and put in the comment section any questions that you would like to ask my mom. Okay, bye for now. Ciao. Shalom.